Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about link performance tips. This is video 6 out of who knows how many again. And I have something interesting to talk to you uh, about today because we're going to be talking about value delegates. So this is a very cool thing that we can, that we're going to discuss. So what are value delegates? Um, they're just behaving like normal delegates, but uh, they're completely stack allocated. They're not heap allocated at all. And uh, if we're going to capture some, like, you know, if we're going to use a lambda and capture some variables and do some things, uh, we're going to first of all land on the heap. We're going to generate a display class to be able to capture these locals. And we're going to do a bunch of allocations which are not really necessary. They could be necessary, but they're probably not in our context. So yeah, that's why I'm super excited to be talking about them. Okay, so let's move on and, uh, you know, let's see some code. So last time in the previous videos, we talked about how to optimize certain link operations, either by implementing a better version of the algorithm, um, by using structs instead of classes, because we don't want to land the heap, then by devirtualizing interfaces, because Every time we use a structured interface, we're going to box, so we don't want that, and that's why. And lastly, we looked at uh, branch elimination and branch prediction. That's a really good optimization as well. But all of these, all of the things actually uh, still uh, left us with a bunch of bytes uh, on the heap. And let's verify uh, sort of what happens. So we have a list here. And we have a function, and we're going to use the plain link version now. So uh, we use a where operator where, you know, our x is greater than some number and our number is 90. And then we're just going to do a first of default. So let's fire up our trusty debugger and let's see what's going on uh, in, in, you know, in allocation world and in the heap. So let's dump the heap. And what you're going to see is a bunch of uh, stuff that you probably didn't want uh, on the heap. So first of all, uh, we have our, you know, where list iterator, but we know how to deal with that because uh, we sort of optimized that away in the previous videos. Uh, but we, what we didn't do is um, we have a display class here that got created and that should contain our value 90 which it does. And on top of that, what we're going to have is we're going to have our func, which will take int32 and return a boolean. So that's one of the things that we probably don't, don't want on the heap as well, because it just, you know, take you up space. And that space is, you know, governed by the garbage collection and it, it can move and, can, and, you know, a lot of stuff can happen. So we would like to have everything packed nicely on the stack if we don't have a specific need to be on the heap. Okay, so how do we deal with this problem? There's a couple of ideas that we can use. So first of all, let's uh, fire up our, you know, simple measure function. Let's see how the classic link uh, performs. It's around 15, 50 milliseconds. Then let's fire up our custom implementation, which we did uh, in the previous videos, where what we're going to have is we're going to have a struct uh, where custom enumerable, it's going to, you know, pass the list and uh, create an enumerator struct and have a custom signature of get enumerator. And uh, pretty much that's it. And we're going to implement our custom first or default version. So we're going to use that enumerator here. And as you can see, all of the signatures are just for the enumerators and enumerables. So we're just passing structs because we don't want to do accidental boxing. Um, you could, you know, to be fair, you could use interfaces and still not box, but that's tricky. Uh, so we opted for like the simplest version for now. And let's see how this version performs. So this version takes 30 milliseconds. Okay. So <clears throat> what we can do to, you know, bring this, you know, speed things up even more, but not having heap allocations at all. 
because we know that we have heap allocations still. So what we can do is we can have a custom where, where we now have two, two parameters. So one is an int and the other one is a struct that's called greater than 90. And that struct is implementing an interface called iPredicate. And that iPredicate has a struct as T as well. It could have really a class or a struct, but uh, for now we're just gonna roll with the struct. And it takes a single, it has a single function called invoke, which takes the takes the T and returns the bool. So um, this is our struct here. And what we're doing is we're implementing that by saying that X has to be greater than 90 and that's it. So, um, you know, it's a thing, but if we're, if we gonna, if we're gonna use that interface anywhere, uh, we're still gonna box. But there's a cool trick that we can do in order to be able to get around this problem. And let me show you the trick. Let me show you the where implementation. So the where expects uh, a T source and a T predicate. And the T predicate in this example here uh, has a, uh, you know, a narrowing sort of uh, signature where the, we say that the T predicate has to be a struct and has to be an interface. And now what we're gonna do is we're not going to accept I predicate in our arguments. We're just gonna accept the T predicate because we already know what it is. And this will allow the JIT compiler to generate code for a struct, not for a just a generic interface because we know that we have a struct. So we're not gonna box and that's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's let's just create the you know our struct because it's an empty struct doesn't have anything. So let's do that. Uh, let's pass it along uh, by ref all the way down to the enumerable and to our enumerator as well, and let's just use it. So um, since we have a predicate uh, and uh, you know it, we have to filter out certain values on move next, we're just gonna do a while loop as we did before and we're gonna check if the predicate is true. And that's it. That's all uh, that we have to do. So as you can see, it's the same sort of use case uh, as we would use our Lambda here. And there's a commented out bit here on the predicate because sometimes if our predicate uh, will be used in and will have certain fields, will get used, uh, we, we can have a defensive copy and this could in theory allow us to uh, bypass that defensive copy. But you know, in this case, uh, we know that we have a very simple struct and so we don't have to use that. Okay, so let's uh, measure the performance of this guy. So that takes 20 milliseconds. So that's awesome, right? That's super interesting that we could optimize uh, it even further. So let's now see um, if indeed there's nothing allocated on the heap. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's fire up our debugger. <coughs> let's restart. Let's go. Let's dump the heap. And as you can see, there's nothing here. So we didn't allocate anything really. That's awesome, that's really cool. Okay, so let's, uh, you know, verify that this doesn't happen because, you know, we might miss something. And this measure function is not the greatest in the world. So uh, what we can do now is we can do a benchmark.net uh, where we're gonna do two things. So first of all, we're gonna do a memory diagnose. So uh, that will tell us what's on the heap and what's not and how many bytes are on the heap. And the second thing that we're gonna do uh, is a disassembly diagnose. So we're gonna look at a, you know, assembly uh, from these functions because there's one of the interesting bits that uh, these value delegates can do, which, uh, you know, unfortunately, lambdas currently can't do. And uh, that thing is really, let me comment this out, we can inline. So 
if we have a display class, we just cannot inline that. No matter what we do, there's no way to be able to inline these functions. But there's a way to, you know, explicitly say that we want this guy to be inlined. And um, that makes a world of difference in high performance scenarios. So we're going to verify that indeed this happens. So let's run our benchmark.net. Uh, it's the same thing that we did before. So there's three functions to test and let's see the performance. All right, so let's fix the formatting a bit. Yeah, okay, so in terms of performance, uh, where link is obviously the slowest one, uh, it has a bunch of gen zero allocations um, and it's worth like 160 bytes. Then we have our devirtualized function without value delegates. It's around uh, somewhere between 50% or 40% faster. Uh, we have some still allocations because we have delegates, uh, but it's like half of the allocations. And lastly, we have our value delegates function with all of the optimizations uh, applied to it. So it's uh, around 60% faster. Uh, sorry, not 60%, it's uh, actually two times faster um, than, you know, the, the world link. So that's awesome. Actually, it's even more than two times faster. But uh, that's that's not uh, really what matters. What matters is that we have absolutely zero allocations. Great, cool. All right, so uh, let's see if um, our disassembly will tell us that we sort of optimized, uh, much rather inlined our function code. So let's look at the where link first. And uh, 5a means 90 in hex. So as you can see, we're loading up our value here to that where link function, and it will do a bunch of calls. Um, but what we're interested in that uh, one of the things that it generated is a display class, and there's a function to be able to check if the value is greater than 90. So this here function has to be called a bunch of times. And as you can see, there's multiple calls to multiple things. Uh, because, uh, well, certain things could be inline, but sometimes inlining doesn't make sense. But at least, uh, you know, this this method here cannot be inlined, really. At least not for now, because the compiler does not support this. And let's look at the last implementation, the third function, uh, where we just really have a single method. It's all of the code is inlined, and because it's inline, the JIT compiler can do additional optimizations because uh, it's you know sees that this code is together, so it will do like a bunch of crazy stuff. And uh, let's uh, try to find out uh, where's our uh, function, uh, much rather where's our value delegate here, if it is here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump here. And this bit of code is the while index uh, is it's the you know move next basically where we're just gonna do a while loop and we're we're gonna check the condition and the condition is being checked here so we're gonna jump uh, to this label and in this label what you can see here is that this is our value 90 here and this is where we're doing the comparison and we're gonna take this branch here. So, um, you know, all good. And um, yeah, so I'm not an expert in assembly, but uh, what I can say, at least from the looking at this code, that indeed everything got inlined and it, you know, we could use some extra optimizations thanks to that. So that's good. All right, so. Um, that's all for this video. If you know you got value out of this video, you learned something new, uh, like and subscribe because that's that obviously helps. And uh, you know, hope hope to see you in the next video. So what I meant to say is, 
hope that you see the next video and you know please like and subscribe and i'm hoping that i'm gonna have even something even better to raise the bar than this sort of here and the bar has been set very high because this is a super cool feature thank you and see you next time bye